Hi, welcome to Ever Box Guitar Tuition. So my first classic album inspection of this year is a 40 year anniversary and it's Van Halen's 1984. So after Diver Down, um, it was actually a very successful album. Obviously Eddie Van Halen hated the uh, amount of covers on it and he hated the lack of control. So he got his own studio together, the 5150 studio with his famous Neve mixing desk. And that's where he recorded this album. Uh, and that was a key turning point in Halen and I would imagine contributed to the split with David Lee Roth. But I think it also contributed to making this album what it is. So this is probably the most well-known Van Halen album in a sense because it's got those three hits and the minor hit. Uh, Jump, Panama, Hot for Teacher and I'll wait. Um, I actually had the Jump uh, 12 inch when I was a kid. I, I heard the track, I loved it, and uh, I went and bought it at um, some record shop. Later on, my brother got the album, uh, and when I was getting really into Halen, obviously it was on heavy rotation on my turntable. Um, let's get down to it, let's have a look at the album. I think the first thing you notice about this album is it's just got a level of polish about it. Um, uh, it doesn't have the kind of grit and big bottom end of Women and Children Fair Warning. It has more of the lightness uh, of Diver Down, but it's more focused um, in its playing. I think it's fair to say Eddie Van Halen, um, Cathedral, and a few riffs aside, he that's, there's one album that he doesn't totally show up on, it's Diver Down in terms of soloing, so I'm like a chair slip there. So it opens with the instrumental 984, which uh, obviously is Eddie on the synth. And this is where I think a bit of consternation comes in with fans because we like to see Eddie on guitar. But this is actually a really atmospheric instrumental. I like the way it builds. Uh, it all, it's one of those things it sets the mood for the album very well. Um, and then, of course, that famous keyboard part comes in and you've got one of the, the all-time sort of uh, staples of rock radio and it's Jump. So it's easy to kind of get blasé about Jump, to go, oh, we've heard Jump again, oh, why is it on synth? Let's try and just look at it objectively. It's quite interesting when you hear a track with fresher ears. I was at my mate's wedding a few years ago and his first dance was Jump by Van Halen. He had it blasting for a PA in a local venue. And what came across was just how great the track sounded, how fantastic... Alex's drum sounded, you know, Alex is just one of those drummers who's got his own sound and how kind of, he's got that thing where he's pushing on top of the beat a bit, it's pumping away, uh, you realise how kind of fun Davey Ross vocals are, but even when he delivers flat bits like, hey, hey, who said that? You know, it's done, you can tell that they've kind of worked on that. And then you've got Eddie's fantastic solo where he manages to get in a really melodic solo, a fantastic key change in it with a fluid run at the end and that lovely tapping run. It's only like 15 seconds long, you know. Um, and then that great bridge as well. It's a great track. Um, there's no doubt about it. Then you go into Panama, uh, another classic Halen track. Um, great riffing on this by Eddie. Yeah, on this album, his, his rhythm's a little more... Toppy, a little more scratchy. Quite, kind of sounds like there's less gain in a way on this. And I think that's a way, in that respect, it's kind of making the sound a little lighter. But that's the way things are going for rock radio. After this album, you know, it will inspire sort of the hair metal thing more and band's hair will get bigger. But there's still that period in 83, 84 where things are sensible, as I say, it's when it goes into 85. I should say that Van Halen never got caught up in the big hairspray or anything like that. Whether they would have done if David said, I doubt it. Panama's a great track, great moody middle section. Um, really good. Then you've got Top Jimmy. So this is one of the album's deep cuts. Um, this track kind of gets forgetting about, but Eddie's rhythm playing on this, the intro, the harmonics, really good. Um, the vibe of this is... You know, it's kind of a track could almost fit on Diver Down. Um, uh, I like the lyrics, it's good fun. It's got a great solo and he just, um, it's the first time he does his kind of horse whammy. Like that, I don't think he uh, does that on previous records. Only two minutes, 59 seconds. Side one finishes with Drop Dead Legs. Again, this is one of the all-time top Van Halen uh, arm cuts. 
Great chord progression on this from Eddie using that D5 with the A in the root. Nice D mixolydian vibe. Uh, it's got a really interesting end section where he does a weird kind of outside solo. You can hear his Alan Holdsworth influence coming through. Uh, interesting use of delays on it. Uh, very an atmospheric solo that's unusual. Alex is grooving away. As you said, the bass on this isn't as big, the bottom end, as I mentioned before. Uh, and there's a debate in my head, does Michael Anthony play bass on this album when you read what was going on at the time and what ended up happening to Michael Anthony with his cut in the band? Did Eddie just play the bass on this in his studio? I don't know. Uh, you can hear Michael Anthony's backing vocals on this album, but there's maybe not as much punch there to them. Side two, a track that needs no introduction. Uh... It's hot for teacher. Obviously, it's got the classic Alex Van Halen drum intro with the kind of tracked double kick drums. Uh, the groove's great. Um, it's easy to forget. Like, you know, everyone plays that groove now. And like, I think you go back to Parchment Farm by Cactus, uh, where you would 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 trace that groove to. But um, uh, it's a great it's a great groove, and I think Alex plays out of his skin on this album. Uh, he's uh, again, it's that extra attention to detail. I think um, great track, great swing on Eddie's guitar, lovely tapping, very funny, very funny video. I mean, the video you know it showed the band's sense of humour and showed like how they could put that into songs. Um, and obviously, it was played at the. Um, Taylor Hawkins tribute by Wolfgang really well. Great track, all time classic. And now the track that was a single and kind of gets forgotten about, but I'm just looking at the track and I'm just wondering what number it made. It made 13 on the US Billboard. So this was like a fair sized hit actually. Let's just look what number Panama made. Uh, 13 on the Hot 100. Uh, and hot for teacher. I'm just looking here. Obviously, jump made number two, and then number in the US number seven in the UK. Uh, what well, I'm looking for, hot for teacher. Power apologies. Hot for teacher made twenty fifty six on the hot one hundred. So our weight's actually a pretty big hit. Again, I think this track gets forgotten, gotten about because it's another synth track. Um, so I'm going to put my cards on the table here. I should just also mention that Michael McDonald co-wrote this track. I love this track. Um, there was a period where I kind of got caught up in the, oh, it's a synth track, and maybe went off it a bit. But I always loved it as um, a kid. I loved the progression. Uh, and I'll tell you a little story. When I uh, was f first learning guitar, I, I jammed over this track, and I've sussed out as in the, the pitch of D. But I started off, guitarists will know what I'm talking about, I started off my pentatonic minor and my blues scale in D. But then I started to play the changing more because it starts off with a major bow now, major tone alley down now, and then a kind of minor uh, on that bit. And then I started mixing up those sounds and I started playing what you call modally. So I was using mixolydian mode and then the natural money aeolian mode. Um, and then over the bit where it does the B flat over D again, that brought out the kind of lydian sound over that bit. So that was a, a a thing for me. I've kind of realised that was a growing moment in, in my life, using my ear to play changes uh, and not just, you know, stay in one scale. So it's got a, a, a thing there for me. I, um, I used to, you know, I'm a tape player down in the corner of my bedroom. I remember sitting on the floor doing it, I think. So anyway, what stands out about this track is it's really well crafted. Um... I think the groove's great by Alex, and I love his do 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 his simple fills. He's kind of almost taking that Steve Smith thing where his fills are very musical. You know, he's got a thing where he's on top of the beat, but the bass is pumping. It's probably got a bit of synth bass. I really like Eddie's keyboard part on it. It's a little less powerful than Jump. He does a lovely solo, and he does a you know another kind of horsey thing at the end. But I like the way he uses space. But I think the standout thing on this is Daily Roth's vocals. Um, again, I was talking about the discipline thing there. Roth's had to go in 5150 Studios. Eddie's in control with Don Landy, Ted Templeman. I really like his diction. He's really precise on this. He tracks the chorus. The harmonies sound good. Uh, I love the way he kind of, uh, uh, you know, he's 
means a lot to me. You know, the way he pronounces that E sound, me, B and stuff. I like heartbreaking molar jive, you know, he does that kind of pulse flat thing, but it's really nice. But I think it's one of his best vocals, you know, it's it's kind of second to ruin with the devil in in terms of like a really well crafted rough vocal. So this is kind of the forgotten about track for me. I love this track. Next up's another all-time deep cut by Van Helm, Go Gone Bad. Fantastic groove on this. Great tapped harmonic intro from Eddie. Um, again, the sort of second pass of it, he plays that chord. And you'll be aware of it, guitarist. It's seven on the D string, six on the G, four on the B, and open high E, which is, of course, gives a Lydian sound, but it's also the opening chord of Randy Rose's famous Die of a Madman intro. Maybe Eddie'd heard that, probably not. He didn't really listen to other players. Great solo by Eddie. Fantastic work by Alex on this. And then finally finishing with House of Pain. Now, I already knew this track because it was the B side of Jump. Interesting track. It's kind of game of two halves. You've got the da 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 That bit, and then it does that double time bit with amazing solo, and then has a different end section. Um, Eddie did some cool high harmonic dives on that. Um, uh, interesting, if you listen to the original uh, demo of House of Pain, which of course goes back to the Van Halen 1, the pre-Van Halen 1 era, that actually uses the horn sound from Running With The Devil. But uh, basically it uses that riff, but uh, I don't think, if I remember correctly, it doesn't have the other two riffs. So it's quite interesting, you know, that they held back from the, this track and then it got developed into something uh, later. Um, so yeah. Classic album. Uh, some people don't like this album as much to see it's too commercial. Uh, it's always been kind of in my second or third favourite Van Halen albums. I think these days I'm maybe steering towards women and children ahead of it with Fair Warning and Van Halen 1. But I just think it's a great commercial hard rock record. It was a diamond status for Van Halen eventually. Of course, you still a jump, you still a Panama, you know, keeping the, the, the magic alive. Uh, so anyway, 1984, 40 years old today. I hope you enjoyed this review. Remember, share and subscribe, and I'll see you again for the next classic album inspection. Thank you very much.